It's time for the Game Show Fans Podcast with Josh and Danny. Hello and welcome to the Game Show Fans Podcast with Josh and Danny. I'm Josh McLeod, your fearless leader. I'm Danny Lewis, your co-host. And with us, uh, our semi-regular... This is X-Factor Gaming. And our newest member... It's Mass Whammy. And today, it is Game Show Video Games Part 2. Or is it Redux? I can't remember, Danny. I think that's Do. Part 2. Yeah. Which was a... The title of Hot Shots Part 2, which is a movie that no one, I'm sure, remembers except Danny. It's our movie. That's why I remember. And so what we did, we each picked some video games, and we used our magical random number generator to determine who was going to go first, and that person is you, Danny. It hit number one, so you're up. All right. Yep. All right. Well, first, uh, we're going to talk about a game that we kind of kind of, that we kind of left out of the last episode. We're talking about so, but I want to talk about Family Feud specifically for the SNES. Now, this game was made in 1993. It was modeled after the Combs version, with the bull's eye round and all. Combs uh, version. What's yeah, the Combs version. You said Cullen. Made, <laughs> I said Combs. <laughs> Cullen. Okay. okay, I'll edit to make it sound like you said the right thing. Thank you. <laughs> But what a lot of people like about this game is that it has a few exploits in terms of that in the way that uh, if you type in an answer and uh, it has a certain number of letters which the correct answer on the board is in, it'll recognize that and just turn it over even if what you said is confusing. <coughs> in other words, one video I found on YouTube, which is very funny, and also there were a lot of gameplays of those family through the SNES in general on YouTube that are hilarious. I'll put a link to one of them below. But the in this particular clip, the question is, name something a limousine has that an ordinary car doesn't. After some banter of the two friends playing the game, one of them types bathroom, as if that's a good answer. And he's like, oh, bathroom, okay, I bet that's true. And then uh, that survey said, and it turns over, but it comes up bar on the board. <laughs> that reminds me of a Game Grump moment. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't Game Grumps in particular that was doing this clip, but yeah, they have done. But I have, but I've made a different one. Name up, name something you buy for yourself or something like to play with or something like that. Uh huh. And they put CD player, and it came up model car, or was it the other way around? I haven't watched it in a while. There was one on the on the actual show that was my favorite moment. I don't know if anyone remembers this other than me, but where Steve Harvey asks, "Name a job where you're going to find a lot of neurotic people," and the person said, "Porn star." And actor comedian popped up on the thing, and he he's like, "Really, a porn star is an actor? Yeah. Really? Okay, that's the worst acting he's ever seen." And uh, another part about feud for the SNES is that uh, one of them, so a couple people have posted things called Glitch Fest, where they can just type in a whole bunch of words really fast and it'll come up correctly. For example, one time. Uh, I think if this is a really bad the plan question. The uh, name an occupation that starts with the letter B, and this guy typed in I obey the Keanu Reeves, and it comes up Baker. Mm-hmm. And after seeing Keanu Reeves on E3, I don't know if I should see that clip. Does he need to be bathed? I'll put a link to those SNES yeah. family food clips below. Just to is that you the your, Danny? Is piece of Paul language one of them? Danny, is that the one with the announcer who's clearly Japanese saying, Number one answer! Uh, I don't think so. There's one out there, maybe it was the SNES one. Or maybe it was the, the I'm Genesis, sorry, the Genesis one. The Genesis one. one. There's one where That's the one I have and I remember that. Where he says, Number one answer! And it's like, couldn't we have gotten like an American to do that? <laughs> or a Canadian? The, the uh, voice that sounds nothing like Ray Combs. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about during the fast money rounds? Yeah, like or during the bullseye round. Anyway, so is that all you got to say? That might be the one you're talking about, Josh. I'm not 100 sure. Is that uh, all you have to say, or you got more? uh, About Family Feud, yeah. But the next game I want to delve into is uh, a game show we haven't. I don't think we've talked about at least not the American version so much on this podcast. Is Deal or No Deal? Yeah. 
One of the games uh, I enjoyed playing as a kid was Geo and Ogeo for the Nintendo DS. And what's good about this game is that if you play it once and then turn off your machine, turn off the DS and then turn it back on and play it again, the case and the amounts would be the exact same. So you can cheat. So, or no, yeah, you can cheat. Okay, good. And uh, so after playing the same thing about once, I wrote down all of the corresponding and memorized it to a degree. And uh, when I would play it in front of my cousins, I would, you know, do really impressive. So, and they'd be like, wow. <laughs> and, uh, oh, you I, psychic. Yeah, did I anyone... Know I know the odds are astronomical, but on the, on the original show, did anybody ever hit the lowest six amounts on their first go? I don't remember. Like, not necessarily no. in order, but... Like, the first, the lowest six amounts in the first six cases, no, yeah. nothing on Okay. Did anyone come close? <clears throat> This is a question for, about a show I don't care about, so... I don't, I don't, if I recall correctly, reading through uh, Chico Alexander's recaps of the episodes back in the late 2000s, there was at least one contestant who uh, opened the penny and the dollar in the first two cases consecutively, but then that was the other... I know there was one where they, like, the very, very first million-dollar mission, where they put two million dollars, like, or not two million dollars, but they put, they had two cases, each with a million dollars, and the person found them like, in the first round, so... I um, think that happened, but they didn't air it. I don't think they... Yeah, they didn't air it. Um, so, who wants to... Who's going to go next? Let's use our magic number generator. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Danny. You Did you have more to say about Deal or No Deal? Just a little bit, yeah. So, go ahead. Deal or, no deal, deal or No Deal for the DS. Buy it if you want to uh, prove to your friend that you're some sort of psychic who wants to win a million dollars. And uh, Big John, <clears throat> we're going to talk about him a little later, but he made some great games for Deal or No Deal. One that Smash Grammy has played on this the last few years, so putting that out there. And speaking of Smash, wow, actually it is. I just hit the generator now. Smash Whammy, you're up. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and I already forgot what I was wanting to talk about. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, specifically the Bitch on person, which I sometimes do on my channel. I've done a lot of work into bringing it up to so I can do all the years on it. That can. Oh, what kind of work have you done with it? Like I've done a lot of w custom wheel configurations, including all the way from the 74 pallets to nowadays, mm -hmm. including daytime and nighttime variants. Cool. Some off kilter stuff, including when they had the 10,000 wedge flipped over to the other side at one time. Also does some type of stuff not based on, on what you've seen on TV. Hmm. Would you consider yourself an uh, innovator of sorts? Kinda. Or an imitator. Don't know about that. <laughs> but I, just, I haven't seen many other people before I before I started it try to chronicle the entire run of the show via Big John's game. Does, Big, I, John, does Big John know about any of your stuff? Smash? Yeah, he does. What does he think of it? Well, he he just knows that people upload upload him on YouTube. In fact, that's that's kind of how he got started in streaming his stuff, starting with YouTube things. Oh. People uploading their gameplay to YouTube, and then he found a streaming site called Blog TV where he started streaming, and then that got sold out. So he went eventually to Twitch. Yeah, I do some stuff on my own as well. But not as much as I used to on Twitch. Uh, what's the next game you want to cover? Yeah. I want to cover Press Your Luck Expert Edition, which is another homebrew. But basically, you know, Press Your Luck. It will let you, if you know how, to work with text documents, do your own boards with any values you wish, as long as you know what you're doing. I've worked on some stuff on there including Whammy the Anu Press of Luck based on based on the GSM version with two separate copies for each season and the pilot going to season one and I, my current project on there is the 2019 stuff that I'm keeping it old school graphics wise and now, now uh yeah. Big John has a pretty crazy person. 
but yeah, he has a good person to press press your look as well. But I, but if you want to keep it within reason, I use expertism more because John sometimes gets astronomically high on the scores. That's true. I enjoy Expert Edition because uh, if you can memorize the Larson patterns in particular, <laughs> yeah, you can kind of duplicate his score. Of course, you won't win any real money, but hey. Right. Have, do you, um, when you do it, Danny, do you ever um, trick your friends into thinking that you're just awesome at the game? Uh, I realize you could do that if you really wanted to. I think that happened at least once. One time I had a friend come over and I was like, here, well, look at this look at this game. And he's like, okay. And then I just kept winning and he's like, dude, what? There was a, there was a, <laughs> How do you do it? And I'm just like, oh, I have a game. I have a game. Bit of a tangent. There was a, there was a, um, there was a game, your Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors that never came out. Like that? You remember that? And it was like, <clears throat> it was literally like a game where there was basically a big, like, screw with your friends. Like, there was a game where you would, you could trick your friend into thinking the game was psychic. Uh, I, th- I think I remember Desert Bus from that. Yep. yep. And there's a game where you can drive a bus for, for literally drive eight a bus hours. for eight hours. That's Oddly enough, that gets a tricky marathon for charity. Yeah. Yep. At least something good comes out of that train wreck. <laughs> it's not a bad game. It actually <laughs> plays really well. It's just boring as hell. And that was the joke of the game. Unfortunately, I don't think that I don't think that the angry video game nerd got the joke. I the way I played it, I actually owned a Sega CD like a year or so ago. I got a can I say that word on the show? Sure. I got an ISO of it and burned it to CD and played it myself. Oh, you were admitting to committing a crime. That could be problematic. But I guess <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't think Sega I mean I I mentioned homebrew. That actually didn't happen. Rich is, of course, telling... That wasn't... that. By the way, that's not Rich. That's Rich's brother, Mitch, uh, telling us this story. <laughs> so go ahead, Mitch. Would you continue with your story? No. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Oh. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast, okay. Mitch. We'll go back. So, Rich, thanks for inviting <laughs> your brother. Um, so yeah. did you have anything more you wanted to say? Uh, Smash? Not really. I kind of forgot while... As soon as we started, it hit me. <laughs> okay. I have a, something to say. Uh, Smash has kind of been doing his own little podcast. Uh, want to tell us about it? Yeah, I think just talking about whatever comes to mind, including the new Press Your Luck on my last one. But I've been to some of the live stuff. Like Double Dare Live, Price is Right Live, Family View Live, and my last, my second podcast episode talked about my trip to View Live. And I had the privilege of uh, guest starring on the first episode. Yeah, we just kind of partially how we came to this point. So, okay, I accidentally deleted the jump, the number generator. So, Rich, do you want me to go next? Uh, so do you. <laughs> or do you want to go next? We want to go next. Okay, I, I guess... guess I can. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> so I've got, I have a plethora. I guess is the right word here. I am covering. What is it? Uh, classic. classic Concentration, Match Game, and the DOS Pressure Love. Let's start with the least amount of information, the DOS version of Pressure Look. Uh The game runs way too fast is my main complaint. I've noticed that even when I run it on, even when I ran the Commodore 64 version on my mini version of the Commodore, it still ran too fast. And of course, that could be because of modern technology being too fast for MS DOS games. And on top of that, the game, the graphics aren't really that good anyway. So yeah, and that, that also kind of like, ties into where I'm going with classic concentration. Other than me being terrible at classic concentration, uh, the graphics they're good for their time, but they did not age well. By yeah. the way, we're talking about the NES classic concentration here. That. Yeah, I've I mean, seen there that some, yet another friend of mine that Twitch streams. There are some NES games like the Mario series, the Zelda series that did age well. This one is not one of those. <laughs> Let um, me tell you another one. The Will of Fortune ones. Oh, jeez, yeah. So the the uh, 8-bit, it, I have a few of those. They look like somebody puked on the screen. <laughs> That's you. And... 
finally, I'm going on to Match Game, probably the best graphically, obviously, because it's a more modern computer game. Now, for those of you wondering, when did Match Game ever come out on PC? Well, the answer is technically it didn't. This is a Big John game. Based around Match Game 90, has the music, the theme, and all the rules and all that good stuff of Match Game 90. Did a pretty good job covering a version of Match Game that I feel like is underrated. Okay, cool. So I'm last. I didn't plan it that way, I swear. Um, I kind of wanted to go second, because I'm talking about the Amazing Race game for the Wii, which no one here has played except me. I had it, and I bought it, and I'm like, y- it- it's it's so bad. <laughs> you need two players to play it, and it's nothing. It's just, there's no roadblocks or detours. All it is is just, you know, guess the best way to travel from here to there. And it's like, well, that's boring. I don't want to do that. Like, it was so boring when I played it. I played it once, and then I put in Prices Right Decades, and I'm like, this is way more fun. Even though the, the wheel is broken. Even though the wheel is broken, but even then, it's still way more fun. Anyway, so yeah, Amazing Race the Wii game. It's not great. That's all I got to say about it. I know that you were expecting more. So, play on Silver Star and enjoy your video games. I'm Josh McCloud. I'm Danny Lewis here. This is X Factor Gaming. It's Mask Whammy. And this has been the Game Show Fans Podcast, and uh, here I am saying goodbye, and remember, it's hard to see the end when you're beginning. Take care, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to the Demon Thousand Network for great more content like this one.